Hi there, this is Colette from Colette Sewing Machines Plus in Yorkton and welcome to Colette's Corner. Since Valentine's Day is coming so close, I thought it would be fun to make this beautiful uh, Valentine's runner right here. This runner is put out by Cut Loose Patrons and it is designed by Kathy Laird and it's called Love Knot Table Runner. And the reason they call it that is that there's a knot in the middle here to join the two hearts. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you exactly how to make this runner. Now what I like about these cut loose patterns is you can see here it gives you all the notions that you're going to need to make it. And it gives you a lot of explanation on how to cut your pieces. It gives you pictures and whatnot so you've got lots to follow. Then on the back side it shows you your actual showing and sewing instructions and it gives you everything in color so it makes it really easy to follow. So I'm going to leave this out on the table here so that if I make an error I can look back at the at the pattern and not confuse you guys. Okay so what we're going to start with first is we are actually going to start making the pieces that we need here to make this knot. Okay so those are the first ones that we're going to do. And they do have two different colorways for it. So one block is done with your light background on the edge and the other block is done with your dark background. Okay, so we need to make two lights and two darks. So I've already made one up, but we're gonna actually sew one together at, uh, at the sewing machine. So what we're gonna start with first is we're going to join our two half square triangles and then we're gonna add the larger half square triangle to that to make this quarter square triangle. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take our two uh, dark colors here, or pardon me, our dark and uh, a medium and a dark, and we're going to sew these two pieces together in order to create this piece that's on the side there. And then I'm going to join this piece on the bottom of it. We're going to do the same thing with the other colorway, but instead we're going to just turn our colors around. So I'm going to take both of these over to the sewing machine. And we're first going to sew our two pieces together and add this on. So let's head over to the sewing machine now and, uh, and we will get that done. Okay, so first I'm going to use, and I like to use a scant quarter. So I always set myself up for a, a scant quarter. And instead of starting at the point down here, I like to start up here because it's a nice square corner and it doesn't sometimes get caught down in your in your feed dogs. So again, I'm going to use a scant quarter. And I kind of have this memorized as to what the scant quarter is. And these two pieces here, we are actually going to press them open. Normally we press them off to the side, but in this particular item here, we are going to press our seams open. So I'm just going to head to the iron here. And what I like to do first is I like to press as I sewed. And then I'm going to just open this up and I'm first going to finger press it. I like to give it a little finger pressing. It gives it a bit, a bit of a memory to start with. And then I have this product here that I like to use and it's called Precise Piecing Product. And what it does is it, it's like a starch. So when I put it onto my seam, you see how my seam is sitting up high? It doesn't want to sit nice and flat. So if I just go along and I put, use my pen here, you just put it into a pen. And now I'm just going to lightly press this down. Okay. And you can see how absolutely flat that seam sits makes it really beautiful. So now we've got this side of our uh, square done. So now I'm just going to add this on to the other side of it and I'm just going to join this again with a half square triangle. Make sure your points are meeting at both ends. And I again, I'm just going to use my scant quarter. And Make sure everything stays nice and straight. You notice I'm not pulling, I'm not pushing, I'm just letting the feed dogs of my machine do the work. Okay. So there we go. And now this particular one as well. 
I am going to press it as I sewed it, and then I am going to press this particular seam open again on this on this block. Just give me a second here. Okay. Again, I'm going to finger press it first. And then I'm just going to use my pen and I just get down in my seam here. And you don't need a lot. It doesn't take a lot to make it uh, lie flat. And then I'm just going to open my seam and get it nicely started here. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now we have our first block done. Now we're going to repeat the same thing, but we're going to use different, uh, different colors, okay? So we're going to join these two together the same way as we did on the last one. I again, I'm going to start from the outside corner here and again use our scat quarter. I'm going to press it as I sewed it and then I'm going to open my seam here and just do a little finger pressing. Seam. And then I'm going to add my block to the side again, to the other side, my half square triangle, and I'm just going to join these two together. Just make sure they're matched up really well. The same product that I'm using on the seams here, um, I actually starched my pieces as well with the product. I just put it into a bottle like this and then um, spray it on. It gives your fabric more stability because right now as you can see we're working on the bias and that really helps uh, stiffen the fabric up so that it doesn't stretch so much uh, when, you're, when you are working with your biases. So I really like to use that beforehand and really get my pieces prepared well. And then again, I'm just going to press it as I sewed it and open my seams here. Okay, and then I'm just going to press this seam open. And I'm not actually pressing, I'm just letting the iron kind of hover over top and then I'm pressing down after. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so now we're going to make our next block and our next block is a half square triangle and it's this one that's right in the corner here. In the end of it all you need four of them. Okay, so in order to get four, we need um, four pieces of, uh, of fabric, okay, and they're cut to the size that it tells you on here. I can't give you the sizes because this isn't my pattern. And what we're going to do to get the half square triangle is I am actually going to use the Quilter's Magic Wand. I love using this one because it's got a really fine line that runs down the middle. And you're going to take that fine line and you're going to match it corner to corner. And then you're going to take either a Frixion pen or a chalk pen. On this black I'm using a chalk pen because of course it's going to show up better and whatnot. And I like to use the, the Bowen ones and um, they got a nice fine point on them and they write really nicely on your fabric so you don't have to um, you know worry about it not showing up for you okay so now I've drawn my two lines and now I need to take my uh, contrasting uh, square and I'm going to put them just one on top of the other and then we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I am going to sew down each one of these sides okay so we're going to head over there now okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down each one of these lines 
I like to sew just a little bit to the left of like on the left side of the line that I drew not on the right side because if I do it on the right side this actually can get a little bit smaller so by having it here and sewing it just a little bit on on the other side of the line then if you need to you would square it up to the size that it needs to be so I like to I like to be just a, a hair off because then it gives me, whoa, it gives me that ability to uh, to square it down if I need to Both of your pieces are on top of each other nice and straight okay and then I'm just going to turn it around and if you had a whole bunch of these to make you could just do what's called chain stitching and just do one after the other but on this particular one because we're only making one I'm just using my scissors and cutting my thread and coming the other direction okay so now where what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, my cutting table and I'm just going to cut this in the middle. You know, instead of going to the cutting table, I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors because it really doesn't need to be cut because we already know that that's our perfect um, uh, quarter inch there. So we're just going to cut this down the middle. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to press one to the dark and one to the light so that when we put them together they're going to mesh into each other so i'm going to press this one over to the dark and again i'm just going to do a little bit of a finger press and then i'm going to go down with my pen and i'm just going to give this a nice a nice press you notice i'm not pulling or i'm not doing anything drastic to the fabric because we don't want to stretch it out of shape so there's number one and now this one i am going to press towards my light and i think on this one just to show you you can do it either way i can put this right on my stitching line instead and just bring it back and just gently push back with your with your iron and you can see how nice and flat that goes okay so those are our half square triangles so now we have one more block to make to uh, finish up what we need to do our runner so i'm going to go back over to the cutting table and show you a couple of things there okay so the next part of the block we're going to make is this one right in here and that's going to form the shape of our heart so again we need four of these blocks right here i'm going to show you how to make one of them and then you'll just repeat the same thing to make to make your other three. So what we're going to start with here is it's told you to cut your your corners uh, and the size that you need them to be and they're going to go on to this solid block right here and what I'm going to do here is instead of drawing a quarter inch line on either side I only want a line directly down the center. So I'm just going to put a line down the center on each one of these blocks and you want to be accurate here because you want when you're when you're doing your block you want these to be exactly on the corner you don't want to be going in and doing something like that because if I sewed on that line I am so off on what my quarter inch is so I always make sure that I'm lining that up from point to point and that I'm on my point and not off to the side because they're not going to fit if you do that okay so always make sure you're going corner to corner Okay, so now what we're going to do with these is we're going to take them again over to the sewing machine and I am going to lay them so that I have both of these going so that when I'm done they're going to flip up like this. Okay, so I'm going to go to my other side and put that on and that is going to flip up like that. When I'm laying them on my piece when I get to my sewing machine I don't want to see red like that. Okay, I want to make sure that these are lined up perfectly along my edge so that when I do my sewing line that everything is going to come out nice and square. If I pull it down, of course, we're going to be losing the size and then this corner is not going to be square anymore. So you want to make sure that you're nice, nicely set up in your corner when you sew it. Okay, so now we're going to go off to our uh, sewing machine and we're going to sew these two. Okay, so now I'm here at the sewing machine. Like I told you, I made sure that I'm lined up nicely, um, that I don't have any red showing around my corner or whatever color you're using, of course. And then on this one here, again, I'm going to sew just on 
that side, that side of my stitching line again, just to give us a couple of threads to make sure that our corner is going really nicely, okay? And then you're gonna make sure you come off on your corner because if you don't, when you go to press it back, everything, nothing's gonna line up, okay? So make sure that you sew right to that corner and not on either side of that corner, okay? So now I'm gonna put, the other one on the other way. I always go and I do this, make sure that I have got it on the right way because you know, that can happen too where you're, you're sewing it this way and then all of a sudden it's not, it's not right. Better to double check and you'll do much less picking. And then again, we're just gonna go and we're gonna come out of our corner here, okay? And now we've got both of our sides done. So now what we need to do is we need to press these up uh, so that they create that uh, shape in your corner. So I'm just gonna go here. Again, I'm gonna press it as I sewed it in case there's any ripples at all. I'm gonna take my pen and I'm actually gonna go down the middle of both of them at the same time. And then when I press this up and I touch my iron to it, using this product saves you from pressing really hard and doing a lot of pushing and pulling to your fabric. Because sometimes we tend to push down, like look at how entirely flat that corner is. And all I did, all I did was set the iron on top of it. I didn't push, I didn't pull, I didn't do anything. So this product works really well for stuff like this, okay? So again, I'm just going to flip it back. Again, I'm not putting any pressure on the iron or anything. And look how perfectly flat that is. Okay, so now we're going to go to the cutting table and we're actually going to start putting this together. Okay, so now we need to get rid of all of this bulk that's underneath. We're not going to leave that in there. So I just set mine back and I put my ruler at a quarter of an inch and then I just cut it off. And those you can save them if you want and turn them into more half square triangles or you can just discard them however whatever you want to do with them okay so there we go now we've got all of the pieces that we need so we need four of these and we've got all four and then we need four of these and we need four of these okay so what we're going to start with first is we're just going to move things out of the way here so that we can get the whole thing on the board. So we're going to start with our half square triangles and in order for the heart to meet you want your red going in the middle and your black on the outside. So I always got to think about, whoops, there we go. Okay, so we're going to go this way. Okay, and you're going to sew, you'd sew those two together okay, and you're going to add these two right here. And then you're going to add in your knot and it's going to go like this and this one. So you can see that this is forming your piece going here. This is what can be confusing, confusing sometimes. Okay, and then the red is forming your piece right here. So then you get that knot that's, that's in your piece. Then you're going to go and add this one on this end. Oops, picking the wrong one this one on this end, and then your heart is going to go in the middle, okay? So what you need to do is you're going to join this row together, press everything in one direction, and sew that row together and press everything in the other direction, add your borders on the outside, and then your runner is finished. What I like to do is I'll use different things. This time I decided I wanted to use uh, stippling. So I stippled my, um, my runner and I actually put it on my long arm because it was quicker, but you can do it just by free motion as well. Another thing that I like to do, I don't know if you can notice it here, my, my runners have uh, a nice stiff feeling to them. I use what's called stiff stuff. And stiff stuff gives your runner beautiful body. It doesn't crease or anything. You can crumple it into a ball and whatnot and nothing happens to it. So it gives a nice firm and, uh, and it lays nice and flat when you're done, okay? 
Okay, ladies, we're done. We've got this beautiful table runner to put out every year. You don't even have to give it away. Keep it for yourselves. And I will see you next time on Colette's Corner.